This is Dr. X.H. Balthazar. I am broadcasting once again to present my findings from the world of the uncanny. Since returning home from the Alaskan Triangle, I have been researching the area. I had glanced over a few books I had on the subject, but before I left, I paid a visit to the town's library. I came across a paper, hidden in the archives. It was quite interesting. Dated more than 50 years ago, a woman had also seen a creature that matches the description of the spirit dog. She believed it to be a wolf. It appears the same pack has been in the area for generations. Panna's story about seeing the elder's head in the wolf's mouth is perhaps simply explained as a ritual. However, it was her notes on the hum which piqued my interest. It is what I have expected all along. There is a massive electromagnetic field encompassing the triangle. It is a naturally created field that spans over 573 miles. The author is unsure exactly how it came into existence, but she seems confident in her theory that it is not extraterrestrial. Furthermore, the prolonged effects of traveling through the powerful electromagnetic fields can cause harm to the body and mind. There have been numerous studies on contained areas where certain patients have developed delirium, neurological hypersensitivity, and even depression. These ailments illuminate the reasons why so many disappear in this area. As I mentioned in my recount, I underwent strange phenomena such as sleepwalking and unconscious rambling. To my knowledge, I have never experienced sleepwalking in my life. These peculiar side effects could only be a direct manifestation of the strange aura of this place. This week, I have great news to share. Longtime friend and contributor of the show, Zed, has finally sent me a tape to play for you all. I shall read now. <clears throat> Balthazar. As per our last conversation, the tape I have sent you isn't typical. It is more sinister in nature. On one of my first days of work with my past employer, I captured an interesting event. It's terrifying when you witness the level of corruption human souls can undergo. Z. After reading this letter, I listened to the recording. Zed did not provide much information as to when and where this recording took place. All I can say is that this is truly evil. This is a recording of a town hall meeting between the few city council members. Can we just get this over with? I thought we agreed to the new bill proposed. This is pointless. You know this isn't about that. We need to have this meeting. There's no need to bark, Amanda. He understands. Let's continue. This now begins Springfield Town Council meeting number... Off the record, Amanda. Of course. Let's just skip the formalities then. What time should we turn it on? Doesn't really matter to me. Of course you'd say that. Come on. Have a little confidence. I'm not aware of the time constraints needed to properly- What did you do for this? Intel. Right. You always shy away from any sort of responsibility. You scammer away the moment you smell a little bit of fear. Stand up on your feet for once. Don't you dare lecture me. We all know what you did to get your position. Oh, yeah? What was that? Do you really want me to say? Grow a pair. Okay. Enough! For three weeks, we've been working to bring this plan to life. And for three weeks, I haven't gotten peace from the incessant bickering between you two adolescents. We haven't even turned on the damn device yet, and I feel like I'm ready to cause mayhem. Either work this out in the other room or help me change history. I will not have these final moments be spoiled by the petty squabbles of you two. I'm sorry, Frank. Don't grovel. Let's just move forward. Per our meeting last time, we agreed to start the event at the 0 hundred hour. We would all have time to prepare for our observation of the events, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Splendid. How do the subjects currently stand now? Uh, most families will be asleep or getting in bed. 
The Washington son might be out visiting his new girlfriend a few doors down, but their calls to one another have shortened. I believe they've become more distant. The Scotto grandsons might be patrolling the streets on their bikes, but they've seemed to be taking more breaks. There's only so much trouble for them to raise in our small town. Other than that, our reports don't show anything that would cause a disturbance. Great. How does the weather look this evening? A cool 62. No rain, no wind, almost too perfect. <sighs> to think how far we've come. I hope you two are prepared for tonight. It'll change the world. Have you done this before? Yes. On a very small group of people. They tore each other limb from limb. Blood covered the walls and floor. The signal turns them into bloodthirsty maniacs set on a course of destruction. It's unstoppable. It's unimaginable. It's beautiful. Once the signal reaches you, there's nothing you can do. As soon as we initiate the device, you better be sure you can leave. The range reaches the edges of our town. Give yourself a 25-minute buffer period. Copy. You understand, right, Clayton? I, I do, but... <laughs> Are you having second thoughts? No, I... I just, I understand this will give our town a fresh start, but aren't there other ways to go about this? We will rise from the ashes. Our town will be purged of the filth that plagues our lives. But isn't there some other way to do this? Do you have a suggestion? No. Well, if this is too much for you, you're free to leave. No, I will see this through. I understand your concerns. If I had a wife and child, I'd be just as nervous. You can take them and leave. There's no bad blood here. No, no. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Go. I won't tell anyone. I promise. Of course. Thanks, Frank. Ah! Jesus! We can't walk away from this. Not now. You understand? Jess, Jess, please put the gun down. You should go. Prepare the device, then leave. Are you not coming? I want to see this plan through. Are you sure? Go. We'll see each other soon, Darla. Very, very soon. What the hell is this? This is the police. We have the building surrounded. That bitch set me up. Come out with your hands up or we will open fire. They think they can ruin my plans? Take away everything I've worked for? No, not today. That's not happening. I'll raise hell for this town either way. A strange and terrifying thing to think that those we elect are looking to cause our demise. After listening to the recording, I did some research for myself. There were a few pieces in the local papers about what had happened. I was surprised it wasn't national news. The summary I've created from these clippings is as follows. At 11.29 on October 19th, 1955, Clayton Billings, Amanda Johnson, and Frank Kemp met to discuss their plans to induce a town-wide psychosis. They had been concocting this scheme for the past four months on the authority of Mr. Kemp. Mr. Kemp had secured a device to induce the hysteria through unknown means. He has no engineering background, so it is safe to assume that he did not build it. Tragedy struck the Kemp household as the device was turned on by accident. There appeared to be some sort of dramatic and horrific altercation. When Kemp arrived home, he found their limbs scattered throughout the residence. It is unclear what happened. Authorities found the device located in the center of town, hidden in the statue of its founder. Authorities were tipped off about this plot by Miss Johnson, who revealed the nefarious nature of Mr. Kemp and Mr. Billings. Her current whereabouts are unknown at this time. After opening fire on the authorities, Frank Kemp was shot and killed, and Clayton Billings was later found dead in City Hall. No officer sustained any injuries in the skirmish. 
There are no further updates at this time. That is all for this week's transmission. I hope to be able to give you more updates about my adventures into the unknown. But for now, goodbye and good night.